So I want to start out today with the question. We'll talk. It's a good thing you're flying out right after this. <laughs> um, so the question I have for all of you is: What is a simple life? What is a simple life? What constitutes a simple life? And what happens when you actually accomplish that? Now, the first question is really important. What is a simple life? What do you think of as a simple life? And the lyric is: Don't need no nothing. All I need is time for a simple life. And I think that means to me, I don't need anything. I just need time to recognize what I have. I need time to appreciate what I have. And I have a story. Will brought a friend home from Texas, and a beautiful, beautiful young black man named Kim. Kim, I know. And um, very respectful, beautiful. He's 18, is he? 19? 19. And he came into our house, and we, you know, he was sitting out back, and we took him to dinner. And in the middle of dinner, Kim had all of these tears in his eyes. And he turned to me and said, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. And it's like, we're at a burger place. This is, it's not a big deal, although it was a great burger place. Um, but he was just like, and then he told us this story that literally leveled me. He basically said, you know, I grew up in the um, projects in New York City, which is where my whole family kind of still lives. Most of them have never been on a plane, and I just never could have imagined myself being in a home like yours, driving in your Mercedes, which, by the way, is so filthy. I didn't even give it, give it a second thought. Uh, in your Mercedes and being at this beautiful restaurant. And he was literally in tears, right? <laughs> and I just looked at myself and I thought to myself, look at the life I get to live. Am I appreciative of this? Do I really see it every day? Do I see my house as this beautiful home that, that Kevin and I have worked our whole lives to create? Or do I take it for granted? Do I realize that I live in a home that has a backyard that most people walk into and just think they've gone to heaven? Or do I wake up every day and not notice it? And is my life simple enough to notice it? And that's where I went to it. Don't need no, don't need nothing. I don't. All I need is time for a simple life. All I need is to take the time to appreciate the life I have and not busy myself with all the crap I put in the way of the ability to live a simple life. No matter how complicated it is, and you said it beautifully, all jokes aside, you said it beautifully. It's not about what's complicated in my life. It's do I have the consciousness of a simple life? Can I look at it all from that mindset? So Hans Hoffmann is, the, is a German artist who's Art is amazing. And he said this, the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. The ability to simplify is, means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. I was talking with someone this week and they basically were saying, I can't find the passion inside myself anymore. I don't have passion anymore for my life. I can't find that thing that I should be passionate about. I've lost it. And what I realized is we don't ever lose it. You can't lose the passion. Do you know that? You cannot lose the passion that is your life. You cannot lose it because it is who you are. It's innate. But you know what you can do? You can block it. You can cover it up. You can clutter it with so much in your life that you don't even notice it anymore. So that lyric is so profound. I don't need anything. I just need the time. I need to get everything, all the unnecessary out of the way of my life so that I can find this simple life. And the simple life for me is passion, is that passion inside. I love that the Drapers have literally thrown everything away that they don't need anymore. They threw away their house. They threw away their condo. They threw away lots of stuff. I mean, it, it, and moved to, where, Channel Islands? The Channel Islands, to a beautiful home, simple home, really, on a, on a dock. Now they've just got the water and this beautiful home. Talk about a simple life. Letting go of, getting rid of the unnecessary in order to be able to focus on and be able to appreciate what is necessary. The ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary, 
and listen to this, listen to what he said, so that the necessary may speak. Now we go there. Now we go to the science of mind, to our philosophy, to quantum physics, to understand that you are nothing more than a field of pure creative energy. We've put so much in place of it. Did anybody see the movie? What's the movie we watched last night? Oh, you can never remember the title. It's it, Delgado, Alex Delgado. It's called In and of Itself. Derek Delgado. Did anybody see In and of Itself? You should go home and watch it. It's only an hour. It's unbelievable. But one of the things he talks about is this getting out of the way of what wants to come through. You are energy. You are just energy, creative energy. And you've put so much in place of it. And he tells this story in there about the elephant. You know, all know this story about the six people that went, blind people that went to identify what was in front of them. One person thought it was a hose. One person thought it was a snake. Four people thought it was tree trunks. But it was an elephant. And he does this beautiful thing in there where he talks about this elephant and he goes, and they've identified it as an elephant and they've told this elephant it's an elephant. Then he shows a picture of the elephant, but it's not really an elephant. It's like a Pegasus elephant and it's got colors and wings and it's just spectacular looking. And then he talks about that's who we are. But along the way, (laughs) everybody's been telling us, you're just a human being, bear. You're just a human. No, you're not. You're that divine elephant that can fly. You are so much more than who you think you are. And what you've cluttered yourself with are identities that no longer serve you. You've cluttered your life with knowing who you are, but not the truth, knowing who life has shown you to be. Joe Jordan is a 93-year-old woman. No, she's not. She's 96. No, I'm kidding, Joe. (laughs) No, she's not. She's 93. But that's not who she is. She is this infinite creative energy. Talk to her sometime. That's who you'll recognize, the infinite creative energy, not the body. Our bodies are temporary. (laughs) Your body is gorgeous. So as soon as she says, what's wrong with my body? I just think of her body. I will always only think of her as the picture that she no longer has on her refrigerator, which is a picture of her in some movie in the 1950s, or yeah, 50s, I think, of her in a, in a, in a girl in this very tight little outfit swinging down a pole <laughs> because she was a dancer in some movie and she was a pole dancer. So that's how I see you. But even that, still that, still that is limited, right? So... But what I'm talking about this morning, and when I talk about the simple life, I'm talking about a life inside of you that knows who it is, that knows what it is, and that is trying to speak to you. As he said, the necessary that is trying to speak through you, is trying to speak out. So this, this theme this month is about passion. And I love that Tiffany talked about the many types of passion. But, but you are passion. There is a passion inside of you. When you hear yourself saying, I don't know what my passion is anymore, it's because you blocked it. You have covered it up with a lot of crap that is not who you are, nor is it necessary for your life to unfold. And if you were to get rid of it all, and sometimes it's just to get quiet, to disabuse yourself of everything you think you know. I know nothing. Now who can I be? I just changed that for you, Tiffany. I know nothing. Now, who can I be? I know I'm a father. I know I'm a teacher. I know I'm a minister. I know I'm an actor. I know I'm a dancer. I know I'm a singer. I know all the things. I know a lot of things. But what if I knew none of that? Who can I be? Maybe I want to be an elephant that flies. I know nothing. That's simplifying. If you can get your mind to know nothing, now you've simplified it. The title of my talk today is, <laughs> the title of my talk today is Possessed by Enthusiasm. Everybody say that. Possessed by Enthusiasm. Now, Dr. Walker, my mentor, whenever he used, said that word, he'd always go, if his talk title was this, he'd go, Possessed by Enthusiasm. 
Because that word, right? Enthusiasm. Because it's got this feeling to it. So possessed by enthusiasm. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. I agree with him. So what is enthusiasm? Well, according to the dictionary, the contemporary understanding of enthusiasm is intense interest. Intense interest. So I guess that brings up the question, when was the last time you were intensely interested in something? I mean intensely interested in something. Just give it some thought. I bet you were intensely interested in the fact that you just went through, was it four years of graduate school? Three years of graduate school, and you're now going to study to take your bar. Yeah, that's what I'm intensely interested in. <laughs> you are intensely interested in passing the bar, right, on the first try. And I have no doubt that you will. So when was the last time you were, you probably were intensely interested in getting this house, weren't you? I know you were. So when, you are, Lisa, you are intensely interested in getting this, this business, this website launched, Yes. Do you all have something in your head? Well, the last time you were intensely, I mean intensely interested in something. What's happened to it? What is happening to it? Do you notice any kind of barriers? Anything holding you back? Anything stopping you? All of that is the unnecessary. That's the unnecessary. Because there's something inside of you that is just passionately enthusiastic about what it is that is yours to do. So enthusiasm also means this, divine inspiration. I don't need nothing, just the time to appreciate my simple life. So if enthusiasm is divine inspiration, then that means that there's something in you right now that is bubbling up that wants you to know it. There's something inside of you. We are in a field of pure quantum creativity. Just imagine this, if you would, because that's who you are. That's what you are. I don't care what any six blind people tell you. You are in a field of pure creative energy at all times, no matter what. You can put all of that aside, your life, and literally quiet yourself into feeling that energy, that truth. So what is it inside of you? There is something inside of each and every one of us. You know why I know this? Because it's who we are. If that's who I am, it's there. All the time, no matter what. So what is it? What is inside of you? And if you don't know it, you need to start disabusing yourself of all the things you do know. Clear out your mind. Simplifying means get rid of the unnecessary. It is unnecessary for you to waste any more time on your past. It is unnecessary. Yeah, you can bring up memories, fond memories, happy memories, but when memories come up that you don't want, bye bye Highest and furthest. (laughs) Just let it go. What is necessary for you to know? The only thing that's necessary for you to know, the only thing, absolutely only thing that's necessary, what do you think that is? To know who you are. Yes, whoever just said that. That's the only thing that's necessary. If you know that you are the colorful, divine Pegasus elephant that can fly, now you fly. But if you think you're this really weighted down, uncolorful, and I love how the image just kind of went like this and then just kind of walked off. You think you're this human being that has troubles. Old man river. Dad, old, right? I just keep struggling, whatever that word is. I keep on struggling along, you and me. Anyway, <laughs> if that's who you think you are, guess what? You get to be that. And I really think that mankind has bought into a really crappy identity. And we really believe everything that's come up to this point. But you know, the great news is, in this moment, you can actually disabuse yourself of all of that and start over and remember who you are. Remember who you are in in such a profound way that you just let go of the things that are not necessary. So during the Thursday night class, our Thursday night classes, which we now have, I think, 
eight left. Um, there was a quote that came up in the reading of the quantum re revelation. And as soon as the quote came up, like this surge of energy went through me and I was like, oh my God, that's like an entire talk. But I decided to use it as a piece of the talk. And it's this quote, and it's by Buck Mr. Fuller. And it's this, and I love this. I just can see him at some point just going, huh, I seem to be a verb. That's the quote. I seem to be a verb. Not a noun. Not even an adverb. I seem to be a verb. Yeah, you are. You are a verb. Because you are the infinite energy of the universe, this creative energy that's constantly moving, constantly doing, constantly being, and from the being, doing, and from the doing, experiencing, and from the experiencing, going all the way back to the being. And that constantly just keeps going. That's what life is. I know who I am. Oh my God, a mountain. I'll climb it. Get to the top. I know who I am. Look at all of that. Let's go down the mountain. It's just constant, moving, moving. I happen to be a verb. You? Yeah, you're a verb. Every single one of us is a verb. We are the energy of life moving itself. And you know what? It doesn't get more passionate than that. What is our affirmation this month? I unleash the passion of the universe. Let's say that. I unleash the passion of the universe. You get to do that every moment. You remember that you are a verb. You are not some noun that has a arrived in this place of your life. You are a verb, and I'm sure Lisa Carey, you were a verb personified when you were twirling around that ice skating rink. And now you're the same verb, living life in an even more full capacity of what you know to be who you are. And I'm talking to Lisa because I know her story. And I know most of your stories. Kelly Lang, I watched, Will and I yesterday watched you when you stepped in for Katie Couric on, was it NBC? NBC. And we watched you doing the, and in tonight for Katie Couric, here is Kelly Lang. And we watched that. And Will was like, wow, look at that. <laughs> she just told me to get a life. I was doing it for some reason, but... Same thing here. Yeah, that seems like such passion there. You are like one of these top anchors of the world, and yet here you are now, just as passionate, just as full, just as much a verb as you were then. This plays nothing in who you are today. Yeah, it builds up to something, but the something it builds up to, I'm suggesting today, we let go of. Could you imagine if I were never on Broadway I, if I had never had a Broadway career, my ministerial career would have been horrible. I based my whole career on this. And yet, thank you. And yet, um, that was a West Side Story for those of you who didn't, and, but my back, my back hurt when I did it, so I didn't do it all. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but, but what I'm suggesting is, what if we let go of all of that? in order to appreciate the simplicity of my life. Because the minute I identify as that, I've boxed myself in. I've created a box. There's who I am. Yep. I'm, uh, and, the, and the people make fun of it, and I know that. <laughs> yep, James Mellon, Broadway. But, but what if I'm not that? Am I less? No. I am a verb. I am a walking, talking, living, breathing verb. And my mind is conscious and it's thinking and it's creating. What can I do with this moment? Now this moment, now this moment. And the bigger, bigger question, of course, is what is unnecessary in my life? I want to go back to that quote. The ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary. What is unnecessary in your life? What have you ruminated over <laughs> forever, it seems? What do you just keep coming back to? Yeah, but. Where are your yeah, buts? Right? Where are all these things that you're still pointing at going, yeah, but you know, I, yeah, but this happened. Yeah, but what is unnecessary? What is unnecessary in my life? So I had an exercise that I was going to give to um, the class on Thursday night that I didn't give. And I did it myself on Friday. 
And when I was, uh, I went to the chiropractor and said, I'm coming home over the hill. My exercise was this. The exercise was to clean everything out of my mind, clear everything out of my mind, and stay perfectly focused on everything that I'm seeing. Just everything I'm seeing. Nothing matters except whatever's in front of me. And you know, Colbert Canyon, you still have to pay attention when you're driving over that hill. But all of a sudden, I felt like I was in the biggest car, in the biggest expanse, and I was seeing things. There was one moment I thought, did I take Laurel or did I take Coldwater? And then I was like, nope, not thinking. Just drive. There was such an expansion, and I kept it up. I got home, I parked, and I thought, you know, I'm going to go out back. And I just walked around my yard, and I'm like, think, nope. Any time a thought came into my head, I let it go. I saw things I haven't seen before. Just these amazing things. Talk about a simple life. There is so much of life presenting itself to you every day, every single day. You may think you've seen it before. You wake up in your bedroom. Oh, it's my bedroom. I've been here before. I don't know. Look around. Something might have changed. Something changed for me today. I was in the kitchen. I was making breakfast. And um, my dog, my little dog Mia, was like jumping up and down. And she's, she's not one of those dogs that jumps up and down ever. And I'm like, what is up with you? And right before that, I'd been trying to locate the, um, the fire thing in the ceiling. When, they, when, they, when they're running out of battery, they make those little chirpy noises. Yeah, it wasn't that. It was the fact that a bird had flown into the house and was flying around the, the living room. And Mia's like jumping up to get it. And I'm not looking up. I'm just looking at Mia going, Mia, stop. I'm trying to find this chirping sound. until I finally saw this bird as it swooped past me. And I thought, wow, this is the perfect ending to my talk. <laughs> because I recognized that the only thing I needed to do was to open all of the doors. Because we have, many of you have been to my house, we have doors that open in the whole living, everything stays. And I opened all the doors and I just stepped outside and waited and it finally realized it had a free reign to go wherever it wanted to go. And I stood there and I was like, that is such a metaphor for my life. I need to live life with open doors. And even when I think I'm stuck, there is a door to enter through. Not exit, to enter through. So I invite you this week, as you go through your week, Invite some birds into your house. No, that's not it. I invite you to really ask the question, what is unnecessary in my life? You want a simple life? You want the time to enjoy a simple life? Uh huh. good. Lexi does. Find out what's unnecessary and rid yourself of it. Be done with it. So that what is necessary will speak through you. You are the conduit to allow the passion of life to find you, live you, and fulfill you. Get everything else out of the way. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.